Hello, welcome to the Mark Janot Show, the cybersecurity show. In this video, I am going to cover 20 dangerous hacking tools that you can buy on Amazon, all right? The first one we're going to talk about is the Hack 5 Rubber Ducky. Now, the key features and components is the keystroke injection. The core function is to send the keyboard commands to the target system, exploiting the trust computers place in human input devices. There's also the ducky script that payloads that are written in a simple, you know, scripting language called ducky script. The original version supported just a few commands, but the latest ducky script 3.0 is a feature rich language that supports variables, flow control, and more advanced logic. There's the arming mode. When a, you know, when first plugged in, the device can appear as a flash drive for configuration known as arming mode. Payloads are loaded by the copying of a compiled script, which is basically uh, the inject.bin to the device. There's the processor, right? The device contains a micro, you know, controllers, that's the CPU, that interprets the ducky script and sends the keystrokes at rates of up to a thousand words per minute. And then you have the storage, right? Earlier versions use the micro SD card for payload storage. The newer versions, however, allow direct access to the file system without a card reader. Now the physical appearance, you know, it is designed to look like an ordinary USB drive for stealth and social engineering purposes. Now it's typically used in penetration testing, right? It's used in, you know, by cybersecurity professionals to test the resilience of systems against physical access attacks. There's red teaming and social engineering, right? It can be used to automate credential theft, you know, open reverse shells, disable security tools, or perform other scripted actions. If physic, you know, if there's physical access, right? That is obtained. And, you know, it's originally developed to automate repetitive IT tasks, right? Such as, you know, fixing the network or printer, you know, issues. Now you can write a payload, right? This is, you know, a, a workflow example. You write the payload, right? You create a ducky script payload, a script that opens a command prompt and types the commands. Two, you have to compile the, the payload, which is used, you know, the hack files payload studio or encoder to generate the inject.bin file. Then you have to load the payload, right? Copy the inject.bin to the rubber ducky in arming mode, then deploy. So plug the device into a target computer it is recognized as a keyboard and executes the payload instantly. Now that, that's the first tool. The next tool we have is the M5 stick, which is ESP32 based, right? It's a compact IoT tool capable of Wi-Fi and Bluetooth attacks, denial of service, and even bypassing two-factor authentication. The next tool we have is the Raspberry Pi, which is a versatile mini computer often used as a portable hacking platform, you know, for network sniffing, password cracking, and more. Next, we have the ESP32, ESP82, uh, 66 modules, right? Those are tiny boards that can disrupt Wi-Fi networks, hack Bluetooth devices, or launch the authentication attacks. You have the red key USB, which is a USB device that can wipe data and reset systems. It's useful for, you know, erasing evidence or sabotaging computers. You have the Keezy RFID duplicator, which copies RFID key fobs and cards, enabling unauthorized access to secured areas. You have the hack RF1, which is a software um, defined a radio capable of intercepting, jamming, or replaying wireless, you know, signals, whether it's Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, or the, you know, car keys. Next, we have the Celebrite UFED, right? That's a powerful data extraction tool used to access locked phones and extract sensitive, you know, information. Uh, we have the Palm Pistol which is a disguised self-defense tool that can be misused, you know, due to its compact concealable form. You have the Hack 5 Key Croc, which is a stealthy USB key logger that records every keystroke on a target computer. We have the LawMate CMTC10, which is a covert camera disguised as a USB charger and it's used for secret surveillance. We have the SpyTech Mini GPS, Tracker, which enables real-time tracking of individuals or vehicles without consent. Uh, we have the Simor SIM card cloner, which allows duplication of SIM cards for intercepting calls and messages. And then you have the, you know, we have hidden camera uh, detector. You know, it's basically intended for privacy protection. It can be used, however, to locate and disable security cameras. We have the Spot X satellite messenger, which can be used for anonymous, untraceable communication in remote areas. 
we have the hacky pie which is a hacking tool based in raspberry pi preloaded with penetration testing software we have the rabbler white noise generator which blocks audio surveillance by generating disruptive noise and then you know you, there are listening devices out there right those are basically covert microphones for eavesdropping on private conversations there's the gsm mastercard cork you know the core capabilities of it is the reading and cloning of the nfc slash um rfid cards you know the tools like you know whether it's the flipper zero can read save and emulate nfc cards including those you know that are used for contactless payments and access control they, they basically capture data such as the cards uid that's the unique identifier uh the sector data and sometimes more depending on the card type and security now there are replay and emulation attacks in re in, in this uh, tools regard right these tools can perform replay attacks by capturing a legitimate signal such as the door access card swipe and you know retransmitting it to gain unauthorized access you know you can interact with multiple card types right advanced hacker tools support various card protocols including the low frequency uh and high frequency uh tags as well as hybrid cards that combine multiple technologies you know in regards to sim card and gsm network attacks some tools are designed to exploit weaknesses in gsm networks such as using rogue um you know base stations right like that's like you know the greedy bts to intercept calls sms and data or to manipulate sim cards for unauthorized access or cloning now the way these tools are used is you have the card you know the contactless payment card attacks right by reading you know the nfc data from a credit card or debit card a hacker can potentially clone or emulate uh the card for fraudulent transactions there you know they can also access control bypass so many buildings use rfid or nfc cards for entry so the, you know again tools like flipper zero can clone these cards allowing unauthorized access you know there's gsm network exploitation that's where rogue base stations or software defined radio tools can be used to intercept or manipulate gsm traffic compromising call and message privacy there are some limitations and countermeasures in, in this tool so there's the encryption and secure elements so many modern cards and sims use encryption or secure elements to prevent unauthorized reading you know or cloning but you know older systems are poorly implemented uh you know the security remain vulnerable right in detection and monitoring organizations can detect rogue devices or unusual card activity without proper monitoring and security protocols okay so that's something to keep in mind the next tool we have is the io double d st 400 now the core features is the encryption right it's hardware based with the aes 256 xts encryption supporting passwords up to 76 digits that's the 38 for admin 38 for users right this ensures strong data protection at the hardware level there is user management so it supports one administrator and up to four user you know accounts so the administrator can set individual user passwords and permissions reset user passwords and decrypt the entire device users access data as permitted by the admin right you can display uh and and, and the controls you know it's equipped with the uh 128 by 160 tft lcd and the 12 tact switches for direct device management including password entry and user setup without needing a pc it has supported devices it accepts a 2.5 inch sata ssds slash hdds right that's a seven uh, millimeter or less in height with internal sata 2 slash sata 3 interface and you know external usb type c right that's the gen 1 for the usb 3.1 max you know five you know uh you know gbps now the files that are supported it handles iso vhd rmd vmdk and ima files allowing booting from you know virtual cd slash dvd blu-ray images and virtual hard disks right it is compatible with windows 7 or higher or mac os 10 or higher right linux and android now the boot in, in you know emulation capabilities you know it has bootable virtual drives it can emulate up to three vhds one odd that's the optical disc and the one real drive simultaneously it offers the cd mode the hdd mode and dual mode enabling mounting of isos and virtual cd slash dvd drives or you know presenting the drive as external storage there's no need for physical media in this regard so it eliminates the need for physical dvd roms 
or you know USB sticks for you know OS installations and recovery tasks, right? It has write protection and auto sleep, which includes features like you know write protection and auto sleep for data safety and power management. There's password recovery, so if the admin password is lost, it cannot be recovered, ensuring strong security but requiring careful password management okay so that is what i have for today please take a moment right now to hit that subscribe button and the like button if you like this video and you want more videos like this please let me know that by hitting that subscribe button and the like button right now i appreciate your viewership stay safe and see you on the next video